with you, capture it, and whatever questions you have on the paper that they've given you, amen, we can deal with it this morning. Amen. All right? Amen. It is all too commonly believed that our history began at a time when we are said to have been living peacefully and minding our own business with one another in what is usually described as a utopian environment. When all of a sudden, and for no reason whatsoever, the greedy and imperialistic whites came in ships to enslave us. That's what we think. Mm -hmm. When you look at roots, for example, that's where it starts. Back when we are grunting and, and whistling and ticking and popping, and, and we ain't got on nothing but a loincloth, and we in the bushes naked and whatnot. And, and so that's the first depiction of us. So if we never study, if we never dig, if we never search, we'll think that's what we came from. Amen. Amen. And I want you to have a clear understanding, mm -hmm. biblically speaking, mm -hmm. of where we came from today and what God's eternal plan and purpose for us, colored people, mm -hmm. 
is. Amen. Is that all right? All right. Amen. Because in this day and hour, God is revealing the truth about slavery to his people. Mm -hmm. He's giving us understanding of the prophecies of Isaiah mm -hmm. and Ezekiel mm -hmm. so we can learn what really happened to so-called Negroid people and why. The prophecies of these ancient scriptures are still affecting the Negro peoples today. Racial prejudice is still overtly perpetrated on Negroes. Mm -hmm. Both whites and blacks are enslaved by the misinformation and the ignorance that promotes racism. Yes. Blacks are enslaved by anger, hatred, and blame while whites are also enslaved by the same ignorance, guilt, and irritated hearts. And our country is crying out for an absolute answer Amen. to the problem. Amen. And sadly, so is the church. Mm -hmm. This desire for reconciliation has led to a church movement that consists of whites apologizing to blacks for slavery and all the atrocities committed against us. But that doesn't bring healing or closure. The only absolute answer comes from absolute truth. Amen. And the only place we find absolute truth is in the word of the living God. Amen. To uncover truth, we have to go back in time, back, 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 back to ancient African civilizations. Nations that came from Noah's son, Ham. Yes. Amen. 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 Ham's sons, Canaan, Mizraim, Cush, and Foot, aren't just odd names of people who died a long time ago. Mm -hmm. They are nations that exist today, people from whom African Browns, if you will, in America descended directly. Amen. I can prove that in the ninth chapter of Genesis, verses 18 through 19, it says, And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. Mm -hmm. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth yeah. overspread. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth, mm -hmm. and the truth shall make you free. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the origin of the races. Uh, and to do that, I need to define the word race and delineate its definition from the word ethnicity. Race, ethnicity. The definition of the word race involves these words, a family, it's a tribe, it's a people or nation belonging to the same stock. It's a class or kind of people unified by common interests, habits, or characteristics. It's a division of mankind possessing traits that are transmissible by descent and sufficient to characterize it as a distinct human type race, family, tribe, people, nation, same stock, class, kind, unified by common interest. It's a division that is passable or transmissible by descent. Amen. You with me? Yes, sir. Ethnicity is basically the same thing, except for one clause in its definition. And that clause follows the word heathen. Heathen is not found in the description of race, but it is part and parcel of the description of ethnicity. Heathen. What, what, what is that word? What is that word? That's barbaric. It's primitive. It's strange. It's savage. It means uncivilized. Ethnicity. So you begin to understand, when you think about that, why they chose that word for your products in the stores. The ethnic section. You want ethnic hair care. You want ethnic products. This is what they're saying to us about us. 
without using words that are typical to us. They'll go with ethnicity. Y'all are for quiet in here. Trying to learn. Y'all listen. Mm -hmm. So that's how they slip it in and disregard us and disrespect us in the open. Hide in plain sight. Insult you while you're looking. The race of people all too commonly referred to as blacks and its many variations began long before the period of time of being primitive bush dwellers in Africa. Actually, the ancient civilizations of Ethiopia, Egypt, and others in Africa were founded by the sons of Ham and were famed throughout the world for their jaw dropping architectural splendor. They were famed throughout the world for their advanced knowledge of certain sciences and mechanization. The achievements of these civilizations have never been adequately acknowledged in American history books. And many would agree that they've never been equal. So I'm trying to tell you, we did things that are so great that are unmatchable Amen. in all of human history. Yeah. And yet it is still very much hidden from us and swept under the rug. We refuse to acknowledge what you did. We, we refuse to acknowledge where it began mm. and how it was developed. Yeah. We're not going to give you no credit for that. Yes. But I'm here to clear that up for you today. Egypt's written history began about 3100 B.C. When tradition says that King Menes united Upper and Lower Egypt, setting the stage for the next 3,000 years, you don't have a record of any civilization other than Egypt dominating right. on the world stage right. for thousands of years. Nobody but us. Mm -hmm during which different dynasties of kings and pharaohs ruled over Egypt. Many, if not all of them, were worshipped as gods. They kept opulent courts and completed massive irrigation projects. Some believed that the pyramids were built as monuments or tombs, while others believed that they were built to be power plants. The fact remains they were built and they are astounding. Art, sculpture, and learning flourished, but they constructed many temples to various Nephilim. Now you know Nephilim is giants. Amen. Amen. They took the time to construct places to worship Nephilim that were in their midst. Amen. Amen. And they were called demigods. Egypt was the world center of central of culture and power for thousands of years. I'm going to say it again. Egypt was the world's center of culture and power for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Africans were once the leading civilization on earth, especially Egypt. Africans were trailblazers in sciences, medicine, architecture, and writing. Let me just share a few things that were accomplished in Egypt and in Africa. Amen? Amen. 3500 B.C., the world's earliest known tin glazed earthenware. It was called faience. In 3200 B.C., fully developed hieroglyphs, Egyptians. In 3100 BC, the world's earliest confirmed use of the decimal system. In 3100 BC, the world's earliest known wine cellars. All of this is in Africa. 3000 BC, copper plumbing. Wow. 3000 BC, medical institutions. I said institutions. I didn't say witch doctors. I said medical institutions. 3,000 B.C. In 3,000 B.C., the world's earliest known paper. It wasn't in China. It was in Africa. 
the papyrus. 3000 BC, the world's oldest confirmed board game, which was called Senate. In 2700 BC, the world's earliest known surgery. In 2600 BC, the world's largest single stone statue still today, the Sphinx. To 2600 BC, the world's earliest known large-scale stone building, the Pyramid of Dozier. Also in 2600 BC, the world's earliest known works of carved granite. It was a pyramid called the Red Pyramid. In 2580 BC, of the world's tallest structure until 1300, the Great Pyramid of Giza. The world's tallest structure until 1300. In 1800 BC, the world's oldest known writing system. In 1800 BC, the second order of algebraic equations. It's, they were called the Berlin Mathematical Papyrus. But they derived out of Egypt. Then we have, in 1258 BC, the world's earliest known peace treaty. And finally, of what I'm going to share with you, 1160 BC, the world's earliest known geologic and topographic map, the Turin Papyrus. Now let me share you a secret with you. There is a sign at the Great Library of Alexandria of ancient Egypt. Let me read to you what that sign says. It, and I'm telling you, it's a sign. So they're not having it. It's not a secret. But most people don't pay attention, nor do they discuss it when they leave. But let me tell you what it says. It says what you are looking at is a repository of papyri, or rolled up scrolls, numbering in the millions. It says these scrolls were confiscated from their original owners and creators. The Africans of ancient Egypt by Alexander's general, Ptolemy, these stolen scrolls contain the accumulated knowledge of the ancient Egyptian. These stolen scrolls contain the accumulated knowledge of the ancient Egyptians. The translation process of these ancient Egypt, Egyptian scrolls by the Greeks is what produced the very first Bible. The Septuagint. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, the Septuagint is the very first Bible, and it's the reason why it was written in Egyptian Greek and not Jerusalem Greek. The Egyptians were a great people who at one time ruled the world. They were at the top. But because of their especially cruel treatment of the children of Israel and their worship of Nephilim, God spoke to his prophet Ezekiel. Meet me in uh, Ezekiel chapter 31. I want you to see it for yourself. Because of what Egypt was doing, even though they were great and awesome and all of that, because of what they were doing, God felt the need to speak to his prophet. Ezekiel. Verse 2 says, shows us what God says to him. It says, son of man. I told you chapter 31, right? Yes. Okay. Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude. The question, whom Art thou like in thy greatness? Now, this is God speaking. Mm -hmm. Verses 3 through 6, we're going to pick out some stuff that God said about Egypt. He says, the waters made him great. This is God speaking. He Verse said, his three. height was exalted above all the beasts of the field. Talking about Egypt. It says, all the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs. He said, under his branches did all the beasts of the field... Bring forth young. Talking about Egypt. 
He said, all the great nations of the world live beneath its shadow. We're talking about Egypt. God said it was strong and beautiful, taller than any other in the garden of God. Let's jump to verse 9. God said, I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of Eagle, in, I'm sorry, in the garden of God, envied him. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. This is what God says about Egypt. He says, therefore, thus said the Lord God, because thou has lifted up thyself. You want to know why? Mm -hmm. We're where we are today. God said, because thou has lifted up thyself yes. in height, yes. and he has shot up his top among the thick boughs, and his heart is lifted up in his height. Mm -hmm. Said, I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. heathen. So you see, in God's mind, we were not the heathen. Come on now. <laughs> I want you to miss that. Uh -huh. But somebody else. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. It says, he shall surely deal with him. Mm. I have driven him out. Why, God? For his wickedness. That's what it was. Because his heart was lifted up in himself because his heart was lifted up in his height because he started smelling himself mm -hmm. amen you know how we do we primp and we prose uh -huh. you know it's, it's all about me yeah yeah and god wasn't getting ready to go out like that yeah amen genesis chapter 9 is where we discover that noah's three sons shem ham and japheth were the progenitors of all nations. Through them and their descendants, all the nations of the world were established. Let me run through this real quick. So Shem had five sons. Elam, Asher, Aphrodax, Lud, and Aram. Them and their descendants were called Shemites. Father was Shem. Mm -hmm. They were called Shemites, which was later shortened to Semites. That, that's where the word came from. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they were ancestors of the Jews of the nation of Israel and the Arab nations that issued through Abraham's son Ishmael. Yeah. Most Middle Eastern people descended from Shem, including Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who is Yeshua. Then we have Japheth. Japheth had seven sons. Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Mishish, and Tiraz. From these descendants of Japheth came the Greeks, the Romans, the Germans, and the Russians. They came from Japheth. So of course, they are the ancestors of the white or Caucasian race that migrated up into the northern areas of Europe and Asia. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then we have Ham. The sons of Ham were four in number. They were Cush, Mizraim, Foot, and Canaan. The word Ham means hot. Mm -hmm. Or in the Egyptian tongue, it's Kem, K-E-M, meaning dark and warm from whom we have the Egyptians, the Africans, mm -hmm. the Babylonians, the Philistines, mm -hmm. the Canaanites, mm -hmm. all from Ham. Yep. Now, most commentaries in ancient history books tell us that the names of the sons of Ham all relate directly to the following nations. When we look at Cush, we see a line that takes us uh, uh, to Ethiopia. Mizraim takes us to Egypt. Foot takes us to Libya. Canaan takes us to Palestine. B 
Biblically speaking, Africa and particularly Egypt was recognized as a refuge, a place where you could find respite and safety. It was an incubator for purpose. God said he wanted me to read that to uh, you again. Yes. Biblically speaking, Africa and particularly Egypt was recognized as a refuge, a place where you could find respite and safety. It was an incubator for purpose. Let me show you an example of that. Look in the second chapter of Matthew. The second chapter of Matthew. I'm in verse 13. I'm going to read three verses of scripture here. Verse 13 says, And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child, we're talking Jesus now, and his mother, and flee into Egypt. Hmm. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. And God said that in Hosea chapter 11, verse 1, in case you want to know. Mm -hmm. That's where you can find that. Mm -hmm. but, but Jesus was the fulfillment of, an, of a type and shadow of a path that his chosen ones had to pass through Egypt. I said we had to pass through Egypt. Amen. 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 If you were going anywhere and you were getting ready to do anything. <laughs> Okay. You had to pass through Egypt. All roads. <laughs> Amen. It was critical for development. It was critical for preparation. It was critical for protection. You had to pass through Egypt. I know you don't hear that all the time. If ever. But I want you to hear it today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now let's deal with the question of this curse. This curse that they say is on us. This curse that their description of says that it's the reason why our skin is dark. It's the reason why our head is kinky, because God curses. Lord, have mercy. You know. And so learn to love it. Is what they say. Lord have mercy. Amen. Well, let's look at where they got it from. It's in the ninth chapter of Genesis. Where they where they derive this thinking from. And I'm going to start in verse 20, and I'm going to read through verse 27. And I don't remember what version I used, but it's not King James. But there you'll find a reasonable facsimile thereof. Amen. Amen. <laughs> verse 20 says, And Noah began to be an husband, and he planted a vineyard, and, the, and drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the ancestor of the Egyptians, Africans, Babylonians, Philistines, and Canaanites, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Were, and their faces were backward. And they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be 
his servant. His servant yep. So let's look at how this curse was carried out. Amen. Being Amen. Japheth's servant and being Shem's servant, his brothers. Right. In Joshua chapter 9, verse 27. It says, and Joshua made them that day ewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation. That's servitude. That's servitude to their brothers. Further fulfillment is found in Judges chapter 1, verse 28, where it says, and it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites to tribute. That word tribute means servitude. You're going to work. You're going to slave. You're going to mm. sweat. You're going to toil. How about that? You find another uh, confirmation in 1 Kings. Let me run these back to you. Joshua 9 and 27. Judges 1 28. And then 1 Kings chapter 9 verses 20 and 21. It says and all the people that were left of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, descendants of Canaan, which were not of the children of Israel. They were of the blood of those that were Nephilim. They came through Canaan. Mm-hmm. Their children that were left after them in the land, whom the children of Israel also were not able utterly to destroy, upon those did Solomon levy a tribute of bond service unto this day. God did not curse Ham and all his descendants with blackness and servitude. The curse of servitude was on Canaan. By Noah. Right. Mm. By God. Yes, sir. And the curse was fulfilled in the Old Testament. It's finished. Thank you, Thank you, God. The curse was fulfilled in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. It's finished. Mm -hmm. Now, according to Scripture, the reason for the Egyptians' fall was idol worship. Since the original Egyptians were sons of Ham and grandsons of Noah, they knew about the one true God. The Egyptians were originally monotheistic. That means they originally served one God. But gradually lapsed into the basis idolatry. They fell into idol worship. And you know, like I know, that the very first commandment of God is, Thou shall have no other God. No other gods before me. Exodus 20 and 3. But the Egyptians broke the first commandment of God and ended up worshiping false gods and they became famous for their many gods. They went from being monotheistic, one God, to polytheistic, many gods. They worshiped Osiris. They worshiped Isis. Yes. They worshiped Ra and many, many others. Each town had a town god. And various professions, that is, what, what you do for a living, had a god. And certain craft works had their own gods as well. Some of them were pictured as having human form, while others were known or shown in the form of animals. Horus, that name ring a bell? Mm -hmm. He appeared as a hawk. Hathor was a cow. Scripture tells us that God sent plagues upon Egypt when Pharaoh refused to set the Israelites free in that eighth chapter of Exodus. One American author by the name of Warren Wiersbe agrees with many other scholars when he states the plagues were God's declaration of war against the false gods of Egypt. Look at it. The first plague of bloody waters was directed against Osiris, the god of the Nile. The second plague of frogs was against the frog goddess, Hecht. 
The third plague of lice was against Seb, the earth god. The fourth plague of beetles or flies was against Hatcock, the wife of Osiris. The fifth plague of cattle disease was against Apis, the bull god. The sixth plague of boils was against Typhon, the god with a hundred dragon's heads. Mm. The seventh plague of hail and fire was against Shu, the god of the atmosphere. Mm. Mm -hmm. The eighth plague of locusts was against Arabia, the god who protected Egypt against locusts. The ninth plague of darkness was against Ra, the sun god. And then finally, the tenth plague of the death of the firstborn was an attack on all gods. These 10 infamous plagues marked the beginning of the fall of Egypt. And you know, God don't do anything without first speaking to his prophets. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so there was a prophecy concerning this matter. The plagues in Egypt happened around 1400 BC and then around 710 BC, God spoke to the prophet Isaiah and commanded him to prophesy against Egypt, which we can find in the book of Isaiah in chapter 19. Meet me there. Chapter 19. I'm going to start reading at verse 1. The prophecy begins with these words. The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. In the first verse, God said he would destroy their idols mm -hmm. and Egypt would fall. The second verse reveals how the Egyptians would destroy themselves by quarreling among themselves. It says, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight everyone against his brother, and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. Whenever, listen to me, Whenever we see in a nation social dissension setting in and unity and cooperation no longer possible, it is a sign that a new force is at work, that God is awakened to judgment. I'll say it again. Whenever we see a nation social dissension setting in and unity and cooperation no longer possible, it is a sign that a new force is at work. And that God has awakened to judgment. Part of God's judgment against Egypt consisted of a spirit of disunity and infighting. Because it was determined that Egypt would lose its ability to make good judgments. And in verse 3 we find that the people would turn to sorcery and wizards for advice and counsel. Mm -hmm. You want to know why we go to Walgreens and buy a can of help me out to spray in our house? And why we go to the grave site and put a penny in somebody's? What's wrong with us? I'm the spirit of Egypt. I'm in Isaiah 19 and 3. Shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to the wizards this was the judgment of God this is straight from the mouth of God and in verse 4 we find the first mention of slavery concerning Egypt oh yeah it indicates that Egypt would be given over to another, get this now, to be ruled over mercilessly. Somebody say mercilessly. Mm -hmm. 
It's in the book, y'all. God is, I don't know if you know this, but God is a jealous God. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in Exodus 34, 14 and Deuteronomy 5 and 9, we are told that even his name is jealous. jealous. Mm -hmm. Yes. So dare we go waving some other mm -hmm. under God's nose and before God's face as now. if it's going to be just all right. Come on Amen. now. Because his name is jealous. Mm, my Lord. Mm -hmm. He said in verse 4, And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel Lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. Mm. After Isaiah's prophecy was given, Egypt, Egypt was enslaved by the Assyrians for 40 years. Then God allowed them to return to Egypt. Now, according to one author, American author named Joyce Andrews, in her book called Bible Legacy of the Black Race, I, and I quote, the first scattering of the Egyptians over a period of 40 years, more or less, was obviously intended to dissolve the culture and the lifestyle of the Egyptians, making it impossible for them to reestablish Egyptian society as it formerly was. Now, verses 5 through 7, I'm back in Isaiah 19, indicate how the land would be cursed by God with drought. Because at this time, you understand, Africa was not covered over in dirt and sand and heat. Amen. Amen. Not to this degree. They had plenty of plants, mm -hmm. plenty of green. It was lush. Yes. It was fruitful. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. It was outstanding. Mm -hmm. But God cursed it. Amen. This prophecy has plagued Egypt and Africa for centuries. And the land has yet to be restored. Whenever something like this happens to land, a larger force is at work. You got to understand that. Same thing happened over in Haiti. So much so in Haiti that you can't fish in places because the fish are dead in the water. Whenever something like this happens, a larger force is at work. Only God can dry up land. Let's look at this Amen. fifth verse of Isaiah 19. It says, and the waters, and this is God speaking, right? He says, and the waters shall fail from the sea, and the river shall be wasted and dried up. You see it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they shall turn the rivers far away, and the brooks of the fence shall be empty and dried up. The reeds and flags shall wither. You see it? Mm -hmm. The paper reeds by the brooks by the mouth of the brooks, and everything sown by the brooks shall wither, mm -hmm. be driven away, and be no more. Mm -hmm. Did you see it? Yeah. Egypt was also known, it was known for its fishing and flax industries. The linens of Egypt were renowned, and its garments were glamorous, but the prophecy in verses 8 through 10 reveals it would all come to an end because of idolatry. Verse 8 says, The fishers also shall mourn, and all they that cast angle, you know what that is, an angler cast a hook into the water. Mm -hmm. They're called an angler, and what they do is called angling. Amen. So God says, they that cast angle into the brooks shall lament, and they that spread nets upon the waters shall languish. Moreover, they that work in fine flax, and they that weave networks shall be confounded, and they that shall be broken in the purposes thereof, all that make sluices and ponds for fish. Now, verse 11 is interesting because it shows how the Egyptians ended up in the wilderness. 
where we thought it started. Okay. According to Alex Haley. Mm -hmm. But I need you to see how they ended up there because they started as a well-respected, world-renowned people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 19, verse 11, just the first part of it. Mm -hmm. It says, surely the princes of Zoan are fools. The counsel of the wise counselors of Pharaoh is become brutish. You know what that means. The princes of Zoan represented the counselors of Egypt who would no longer have the ability to advise Pharaoh. Verse 11 says that they would become brutish. That's animal-like or stupid. The Lord made them brutish. All of a sudden, their brains didn't work like they used to. They couldn't put thoughts together. They couldn't propose ideas and concepts. It went away from them. And, and, and I don't know who's in the room, but maybe you know something like I know something about how your mind can get away from you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And how your memory ain't yeah. allowing you to recall this, that, and or the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Or, or how you might struggle to put your words together when <laughs> you ought not to have no problem putting them together. Come on now. Imagine, imagine when God strike you with stupid. Mm. <laughs> oh, I can't even think about that for you. That might help you get yourself right. <laughs> you know that's right. Look at here. I wouldn't want to do it. The Lord made them brutish. Look at this now. I don't want you to miss this. He did that in the same way that he made Nebuchadnezzar. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Animal life. Yeah. To, and let me tell you why he did it. He did it to show him who is the true ruler in yes, the kingdom. Yes, he did. Yes, he, did. That's right. he didn't do it for fun. He didn't do it to embarrass yeah. Nebuchadnezzar. He wanted Nebuchadnezzar to understand mm -hmm. who is. Who God is. Right, right. That's all it's ever been about. You need to know who God is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daniel yeah. chapter 4. Meet me there. Daniel chapter 4, verse 25. When you get there, holler at me. What was the scripture you just left? Uh, what did Isaiah I just leave? 19, I left uh, Isaiah 1911. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Daniel 425. Mm -hmm. I'm about to read it, y'all. That they shall drive thee from men, and they and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over thee till thou know, how long, Lord? Till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Amen. Just like Nebuchadnezzar was made animal-like and driven into the fields, also the Egyptians were made brutish and driven into the bushland. I mean, wow. Ezekiel chapter 29 now. 5 and 6. Ezekiel chapter 29, verse 5 and 6 says, and this is God speaking, amen, to Egypt. He says, and I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness, thee and all the fish of thy rivers, thou shalt fall upon the open fields. Thou shalt not be brought together, nor gathered. I have given thee for meat to the beasts of the field and to the fowls of the heaven. Look at verse 6. And all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am the Lord. This divine judgment. There's a real important passage of scripture I want us to read together. It's in the first chapter of Exodus. 
I'm going to be reading it from the New International Version. <clears throat> but I want you to see this picture of how the children of Israel had to deal with the judgment of God and how it affected their lives and what it brought them to because it establishes for us a pattern of God. So when you see this pattern, you understand what's taking place and why God is doing it or why God is allowing it. Amen? Amen. Verse 1. Stay with me. Absolutely. These are the names of the sons of Israel who went to Egypt with Jacob, each with his family. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The descendants of Jacob numbered 70 in all. Joseph was already in Egypt. I didn't know which I was doing. Now, Joseph and all his brothers and all that generation died. Mm -hmm. But the Israelites were exceedingly fruitful. They multiplied greatly increased in numbers and became so numerous that the land was filled with them. Then a new king to whom Joseph meant nothing came to power in Egypt. Somebody say in Egypt. In Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Mm -hmm. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them or they will become even more numerous, and if war breaks out, will join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. This is what the king thought to himself. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor, and they built Pithom and Ramesses as store cities for Pharaoh. But look at verse 12. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. Mm -hmm. We did the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, 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 the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and worked them, what did it say? Ruthlessly. Ruthlessly. They made their lives bitter with harsh labor in brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. In all their harsh labor, the Egyptians worked them Ruthlessly. Ruthlessly. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Shifra and Pua, when you are helping the Hebrew women during the childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. Mm. But if it is a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God. I said the midwives, however, Amen. feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? And the midwives answered Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous <coughs> and give birth before the midwives arrived. So God was kind to the midwives. And the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. I'll stop reading there. Now, it's important that we recognize and identify this pattern that God establishes here because of what the Egyptians imposed harshly and severely, they, we, would have to suffer the same. Hey. We had to come through the same mm -hmm. pattern mm -hmm. to get us to where we need to be. Mm -hmm. So we come to a time when something strange happens. I'm in Isaiah chapter 20, verses 3 through 6. Something strange happens. It says, then the Lord said, my servant Isaiah has been walking around naked and barefoot mm -hmm. 
for the last three years. This is a sign, a symbol of the terrible troubles I will bring upon Egypt and Ethiopia. For the king of Assyria will take away the Egyptians and Ethiopians as prisoners. You see it right here in scripture. Mm -hmm. He will make them walk naked and barefoot, both young and old, their buttocks bared to the shame of eat their buttocks. It's in scripture. Bared to the shame of Egypt. Then the Philistines will be thrown into panic. For they counted on the power of Ethiopia and boasted of their allies in Egypt. They will say, if this can happen to Egypt, what chance do we have? We were counting on Egypt to protect us from the king of Assyria. So Egypt was respected, highly respected among the others that were from different other areas. And they, 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 they thought highly of them and, and, and expected much from them mm -hmm. for their own benefit. And yet now this was drying up and shriveling up and going away. And they were disturbed. <laughs> because God was working. No. Amen. The judgment of God was being <laughs> meted out. Amen. Now, Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 4. Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 4, it says, But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Listen to what he says here. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. He says in Isaiah 19 and 4, and the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel Lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. So it was God that set us on this path. It was God that released this judgment on us. It didn't have nothing to do with the people. Amen. It's not the people's fault. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's our fault. Mm -hmm. As a people, it's our fault. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and as a people, we have to address it. Amen. With God and before God. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you're ever going to see any change, mm -hmm. real, substantive, lasting, beneficial change in your life, we're going to have to acknowledge this. We're going to have to deal with this before God. People have asked the question. I never heard it before I did this study what the answer to that question was. They wanted to know about the ships that came to Africa. Mm -hmm. why, did, why did the ships come? Why did God allow the ships to come? Well, I'm glad you asked. So why don't you meet me in Ezekiel chapter 30. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel chapter 30. Ezekiel Chapter 30, verse 9, you'll see that the Lord God is speaking. And the Lord God said this in verse 9. In that day shall messengers go forth from me in ships to make the careless Ethiopians afraid. And great pain shall come upon them as in the day of Egypt, 
for lo, it cometh. So it was the determination and purpose of God that sent the ships. Let's find out why by going to 30, chapter 31, verse 10. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast lifted up thyself in height and hast shot up his top among the thick boughs and his heart is lifted up in his height, I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. wickedness. And it don't stop there. God further explains in chapter 32, still in Ezekiel, verse 9, he says, And I will also vex the hearts of many people. When I shall bring thy destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known. I'm not gonna just, I'm not gonna just destroy you. I'm gonna bring your destruction into where they live. So you understand, partially at least, why people can be irritated. Because we brought your mess over here. Amen. Well, if you don't believe me, look at Jonah. When Jonah was on the ship and things began to go sideways mm -hmm. and the men began to question who served whom. And when they discovered who Jonah served because he didn't keep it a secret, they wanted to get rid of him right quick mm -hmm. because they said it's your fault mm -hmm. that all this is happening to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when we come into somebody else's sphere with our unrepentant mess, it's going to cause problems in, in that land. Amen. Y'all don't want to. Y'all don't want to. Oh, Lord. Shock, shock, shock. Yeah. 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 And, and so that's part of what causes people's hearts to be vexed. The other part is the fact that God said, I will vex the hearts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can't help but be vexed. <laughs> okay. Because this is my plan. This is my pattern. This is what you got to pass through, and this is what I got to set up, and this is what I got to issue, and this is what I have to ordain in order for it to be so. Wow. I said in order for it to be so. Mm -hmm. Because I love you, and I, I want you to be mine. I want In the day when I take up my jewels, yeah. I want to claim you as my own. Yeah. I want to be proud of you. I want to see you having come through successfully. Amen. Amen. So God says in Ezekiel 32 and 9, I will also vex the hearts of many people. Somebody say many people. Many people. When I shall bring thy destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. By the swords of the mighty will I cause thy multitude to fall. The terrible of the nations, all of them, they shall spoil the pomp of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And all the multitude thereof shall be destroyed. Verse 15. When I shall make the land of Egypt desolate. It wasn't desolate before. And the country shall be destitute of what whereof it was full. When I shall smite all them that dwell therein, then shall they know that I am Ooh. the Lord. My, the Lord. My, my, my. When I shall smite all of them mm. that dwell therein, then shall they know that I am the Lord. Amen. Amen. God is telling me to keep looking at this pattern and curse. It wasn't my plan to go this way, but he wants me to stay right here for a minute. Amen. So let's stay right here. I'm going back to Daniel now. Chapter 4. Where we looked at, we learned that 
King Nebuchadnezzar went through this way so that he could learn and understand who God is. God says, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as the oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. So there has to be a period of time that, that, that we, like oxen, stumble through life beneath our privilege. I'm trying to answer the question, why so many of us are still suffering, living beneath our privilege. What is, what's really going on? It's, it's because even though, even though God has not kept us in his judgment, we have kept ourselves in his judgment. Because we have stepped in. Because we have not given ourselves holy to God. I'm talking about in your daily life where God wants to do certain things. God wants to manifest himself in certain ways. God wants to accomplish certain things. And for some of us, it's not to be permitted. Instead, we find ourselves trapped in, in, in repetitious practices that do not serve God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And it is the heart of God that we would realign our functionality mm -hmm. so that he could like a laser aim and fire at what he wants to. Yes. Amen. Am I making any sense yes, to you? Yes, yes, yes. So, 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 so I go to, I go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Because I need you to see how serious this is. And that there is no escape for any of us whom the Lord loveth. Whom he loveth, he chasing us. Yeah. Am I right about it? Right, right about it. So I'm in Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to read verse 15. Just stay with me. But it shall, somebody say shall. shall. It shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Verse 21, the Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he hath consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew. And they shall pursue thee until thou perish. And thy heathen that is over thy head shall be brass. And the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Verse 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters but thou shalt not enjoy them. My, my, my. Uh, For they shall go into captivity. 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 I got to keep going, y'all. Isaiah 19 and 2 says, And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother. 
and everyone against his neighbor, city against city and kingdom against kingdom. Ezekiel 30 and 23 says, and I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and will disperse them through the countries. Deuteronomy 28 and 30 says, thou shalt betroth the wife and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard and shall not gather the grapes thereof. Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck mm. until he have destroyed thee. Mm. Mm. I got to fix this, y'all. <laughs> my, my, my. My Lord. Mm. My Lord. <sighs> my Lord. Last thing I read had to do with betrothing a wife and another man shall lie with her, right? Right. Okay. I'm going to keep going. You got to hear it. Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. All these things and more come to those who refuse to serve God completely. What am I trying to get across here, Holy Ghost? I'm trying to impress you with the concept that if we try to cut God short, if I understand that God said these things to me about my life and how I should walk, and I'm just going to do these two and leave everything else undone, I remain connected to the curse. I don't have the free liberty. I may, I may, I may experience some of it, and I may have convinced myself that it's okay. Mm-hmm. But I'm here to tell you it's not okay. It's not okay. I'm here to tell you that you are therefore living beneath your privilege. Amen. And that which God would do and God certainly desires to do, he cannot go against his word for you. Amen. Amen. Well. Even, it'll show up even in, in our employment. Isaiah 19 and 15 says, neither shall there be any work for each other. Yeah, Isaiah 19, 15 says, Neither shall there be any work oh, Jesus. for Egypt, which the head or tail, branch or rush may do. It'll show up in, in, in 
in, in whether or not we feel positive and strong about ourselves. Ezekiel 32 and 10 says, Yea, I will make many people amazed at thee, and their kings shall be horribly afraid for thee. When I shall brandish my sword before them, and they shall tremble in every moment, every man for his own life in the day that they, that they fall. Then there's the question of the Brutus spirit, which we saw come upon Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 19, chapter 19 of Isaiah, verse 11, says, Surely the princes of Zoan are fools. The counsel of the wise, counselors of Pharaoh, is become Brutus. How say ye unto Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of the ancient kings? Some of the dress and hairstyles that are prevalent among African browns, if you will, today certainly do not reflect refinement. They are pseudo-Afrocentric. There's a difference between refined Afrocentric dressing and pseudo Afrocentric dressing, which reflects the bushland. Some brothers wear their pants down, showing their buttocks. I'm talking about the butt out. Mm -hmm. But according to Isaiah 20, this represents the shame of, of our curse. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. Oh, I know you heard about jail and blah, 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 but before all that, mm -hmm. it represents the shame of our curse. Isaiah 20 and 4 says, So shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians prisoners and the Ethiopians captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of Egypt. Now, I think it's a good idea to stop right here and let this marinate for a few. Amen. Amen. And maybe y'all could eat some fruit. Yes. And enjoy yourself for a few minutes, and I'll come right back, and I'll take us from there to a better place. Amen. <laughs> yes. Yes. There is a better place. Oh, a better place. Oh, <laughs> Amen. Amen. I would have fainted. Amen. If it wasn't. I grew up in to the see the goodness of the Lord. The cast of oil. The land of the living. Wasn't no getting away. <laughs> You're gonna take that citric of nitrate and whatnot. And they weren't playing with you. You're gonna take all of it. Yes. Amen. 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 So, by all means. All right.
shift of time and a season. <laughs> okay, okay. Huh? Okay. All right. So Satan can wait the event out. Right. Oh, y'all gonna do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. But then it's gonna be over, and it's gonna be over. Right. Mm -hmm. But we, we need to make all this walk our culture. Right. <laughs> so it's regular. Mm -hmm. It's in us. Yeah. And this is what we do. Right. Keep getting fed. That's the only way life's gonna change. Right. That's the only way patterns are gonna change. Mm -hmm. If we be consistent. Right. I agree. Share a few thoughts. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs>
We ain't talking about which demon spirit, right? <laughs> it's whether it's a demonic spirit or the spirit of God that's working. And if the spirit of God is working, what am I doing to provoke God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're doing right. for real for real right. <laughs> right. You, know, you can say all you want I'm the head not the tail mm -hmm. uh, but are you hearkening uh, unto right. uh, and if you're not then you ask him for the curse right. when people say that all things are for your sake mm -hmm. that the abundant grace through the thanksgiving of many may redound unto the glory of God for which cause we think not, though your outward man is perishing, it's your inward man that is renewed day by day. For your light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for you a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while you look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. Things which are not seen are eternal. Mm -hmm. For it was God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness that shines in my heart mm -hmm. to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Because I have this treasure mm -hmm. in an earthen vessel that the excellency of a power might be of God mm -hmm. and not of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, well, here again. It's something, it's, it's something else. It's backed up by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's, um, I, 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 will, I will say, I think I might have said it back here. I don't know. But, but I will say that when you say it, when you say it, essentially, it's our fault. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and, and it's that same thing. Did I say you're eating from the wrong tree? <laughs> Trying to use our mentality, our means, our thinking, our heart. Trying to make stuff change. And we can't do it. Hmm. We cannot. Intellect, it, it, we, we're not intellectual enough and cannot be nor ever will be That's right. intellectual enough. There is a God, as we say, that sits high and looks low, that is able to, to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. <laughs> but it's according to the power that works in us. And that power that works in us is not me and myself and I. Right. Hmm. That's what got that's what got me into the mess anyway. Mm -hmm. Me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. And me, myself, and I goes back to Egypt. Mm -hmm. right. And all and all of the stuff that, that come that came down through that. Because every time you said Egypt, I, I, I hear black folk. Mm -hmm. right. Every time you said Egypt, Ethiopia. Black folk, and Ethiopia. And I hear and all of it. I hear black folk. Yeah. I, hear, I hear black folk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. of Seba. Yeah. Yeah. Come out of Cush.
can't get mad. Say the Lord know your heart without you opening yeah. your mouth. Refinement, 
the prevalent unemployment, the fear African Browns have toward the authorities and the fear they engender in others. Now, when I say African Browns, because I don't like to be called black. Mm -hmm. I ain't never been black. I had some black shoes <laughs> and some black belts, but I ain't never been black myself. I'm brown, and I like to be referred to as an African brown because Africa was where I came from. It's where I derived, amen. But I'm in America now. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Bless his name. Too many remain angry, hostile, and are even looking for reparations. Hmm. But the only way to reverse the curse, I'll say it one more time, mm -hmm. the only way to reverse the curse is that we must repent of these attitudes and postures. Mm -hmm. I said we must repent of those attitudes mm -hmm. and postures. Let go of the anger and the rage. Yes, yes. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, Verses 13 through 15, he said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, as, much, as many as be mature, as many as be adult, amen, be thus minded. And if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So we have a responsibility for the pathway out. It is a personal response of repentance to and before God. Amen. Amen. That there is a way to healing and restoration. And it's, it's outlined for us in scripture. Mm. We must confess the sins of our ancestors. Amen. Now I, I can hear you because you feel like I'm only responsible for the sins I do. Why do I need to, to be, be asking forgiveness for somebody else's wrongs? Mm. Especially when it was somebody that came before I did. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I, I feel you. But there's a pattern here. And I want you to see it. It's in Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26, verses 40 through 42. Instruction from God. Somebody say instruction from God. Instructions from God. Amen. And don't we all want instruction Amen. from God? Yes. It's right here. Leviticus 26 verse 40 says, If they shall confess their iniquity and, somebody say and. And. Come on, one more time. Please say and. And. And the iniquity of their fathers. Mm. You God see says, it? Yes, God says so. With, with, with their trespass, which they trespass against me. This is still God speaking. <laughs> and that also they have walked contrary. They walked unto me. Not you, them. And that I also have walked contrary unto them. And have brought them into the land of their enemies. Even then, their uncircumcised hearts be humble. And they then accept the punishment of their iniquity. Accept the punishment of their iniquity. Mm. Accept, you see it? Mm -hmm. The punishment of their iniquity. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob. And also my covenant with Isaac. And also my covenant with Abraham. Will I remember? There's a promise, y'all. It's found in the 19th chapter of Isaiah. You'll want to turn there. There's a promise. There's a promise. 
God is speaking in a prophecy of the future, of a specific day and time. Mm. Of a specific day and time that's coming. He says, in that day. Did I tell you verse 18? Uh -uh. Verse 18, chapter 19, okay. Isaiah. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors. And he shall send them a Savior. Mm, hallelujah. And a great one. And he shall do what? Deliver them. And he shall do what? Deliver them. And he shall. Woo, glory. He shall. Thank you can you, see it in the book. Yeah. My, my, my. And he shall send them a savior and mm -hmm. a great one, and mm -hmm. he shall mm -hmm. deliver them. Ooh, glory. David said in the 119th mm -hmm. Psalm, verse 71, he said, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, mm -hmm. that I might learn thy statutes. This goes to show us what our posture. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And what our attitude, because mm -hmm. David was a man after God's own heart. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he was so much so that very thing that God pronounced it in the Old Testament and repeated it in the New. Mm -hmm. A man after my own heart. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And so, and so if you want to be like David, you want to be able to say that it's good for me that I've been afflicted, that I might learn mm, yeah. thy statutes. Yes, yes. My God. Mm. No, I was in Psalms 119, 119. Oh, verse 71. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I need you to meet me in Isaiah chapter 19. We've looked at it before, but there's a promise of wholeness coming at you. Nah, I want nah, you to nah. know it's not a light duty thing that God is doing. Amen. 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 For these light afflictions which are but for a moment working for us uh, a far more exceeding and eternal yes, weight of glory. glory. Yes. I said these light afflictions. Uh -huh. I said these light, oh, these light afflictions uh -huh. which are but for a moment but for a moment working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight. Mm. Ooh, the glory, the weight. Oh, glory. Mm. The weight of glory. Even Isaiah 19. Ooh. Verse 21 says, And the Lord shall be known in where? Egypt. Uh, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day and shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. And the Lord shall smite Egypt. He shall smite and heal it. Mm, smite and heal. Do you see it? Yeah. He shall smite and heal it. And they shall return even to the Lord. Glory. And he shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. Heal them. Do you see it in your book? Amen. This is the promise we're looking for. In that day, in that day, in that day, yes. there shall be a highway That's out of Egypt right. to Assyria. Yes. Uh -huh. And the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with uh -huh. the Assyrians. In that day shall Israel be the third. Third. <laughs> Did you see it? Uh -huh. In that day shall Israel, somebody, mm -hmm. be the third with Egypt. Mm -hmm. Even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, 
saying, Blessed be Egypt, my, my people. people. Uh, you see that part. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And Assyria, the work of my hands. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Israel, my inheritance, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, Egypt. Yeah. my people. And Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. In Psalm 68 and 31, it says, Princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. So we see all people of color of the Africanos line coming back to God. No matter how many years it's been, no matter how much we've had to face, no matter how much we've been challenged That's with, right. no matter how much we've come through, amen, we are going to all meet at God. Yes. yes. Amen. amen. And it is the expectation of God that it be so. Amen. Amen. Y'all ain't excited enough for me. <laughs> I say we're coming back to God. Yeah. Amen. amen. Leave Leviticus uh, 26, verse 40 and 41. It says, and they shall, I'm in verse 40, and they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers in their, in their trespass, which they trespass against me, and also that because they walked contrary to me. I also walked contrary unto them and brought them into the land of their enemies. You hear this? Yes. I also walk contrary unto them. That's mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And brought, brought them. them. Yes. You see it? Yes. Into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised heart be humbled. You see it? Mm -hmm. And they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. That's the way out right here. That's right. That's right. That's the way out. Shouldn't have any question about that. Dang, it's dang. plain. It's clear. You gotta accept dang, the dang. punishment. <laughs> it should be understood by now that indeed a crime was committed. <laughs> Amen. 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 The criminal was arrested. He was brought before a judge and sentenced. Then he was incarcerated for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. But now, but now, his sentence has been served. Mm -hmm. Should the criminal feel that the arresting officer much apologize for arresting him? No. Should he feel that the judge who sends him must apologize? Mm -hmm. And neither should the guards at the jail. No one could have cursed us unless God cursed us first. Amen. 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 That's pointed out to us in Numbers 23 and 8. Where it says, how shall I curse whom God has not cursed? Amen. Or how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? Mm -hmm. So that's a spiritual law. You can't cross over that. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You're blessed. Right. No matter what happens. Amen. 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 Back a little bit. Verse 24 says, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Verse 26, and hath made of one blood all nations of men. Of one blood. Somebody say one blood. One blood. Oh, of one blood. Of one blood. So if I'm ethnic, you ethnic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, but it's we the word. 
one blood. That's the word. Mm -hmm. For to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Verse 27, that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. <coughs> For in him we live yes. and move. Yes. And have our being. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. God. He is our answer. He is our escape. He is our way out. Amen. He's our strength. He's our promise. Amen. He's our anointing. He's our victory. Yes. Blessed be his name even forevermore. Yes. Glory to the name of God. Lift him up in his name. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you and we magnify you and we honor you and give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 We highly lifted up, O God. Power and dominion is thine forever. Great is thy name. In Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. Be high and lifted up, O God. We thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us. We thank you that even when we couldn't see straight, you were singing for us. We thank you when we couldn't break loose. You was our way loose. We thank you, Lord, that your love for us never ran out. That your love for us never ran short. We thank you that you love us anyway. We thank you that your love is an everlasting love. We bless your name, John. You're the king of kings. Yeah, and you are the Lord of lords. How excellent is your name. In all the earth, glory. you set glory. your glory above the heavens. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Even now glory. and forevermore. Glory. Woo, even now glory. and forevermore. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your word. Yeah. We thank you for your liberty. Yes, thank you, Lord. We thank, we thank you for your revelation. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your victory. Yes. We thank you for your triumph. Oh, bringing us out with a you mighty hand. Us to triumph. Yes. 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 Thank you for the celebration. Oh, yes. oh God, that we are on top. Uh, yes. We are the head oh. and not the tail. Yes. We bless your name. Above all. Blessing to you. Amen. Yes. Amen. That you can see a way out. Yes. That it's not all dark and gloomy. Yes. But you had to look at it. Yeah. You had to recognize it. You had to identify it. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that you don't have to be a part of it. Yes. Yes. Amen. You can step yes. out. Yes. And you can stay out. Yes. Amen. Bless his name. Amen. 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 I don't know how you all wanted to conduct. Man, the ending. Hallelujah.